Good afternoon and welcome to the press conference following the Foreign Affairs Council, the virtual Foreign Affairs Council by VTC today. Um, I'm going to give the floor to the High Representative uh, who will brief you on uh, the outcomes of the today's Foreign Affairs Council and then we have the time for a few questions. High Representative, you have the floor. Good morning, <coughs> Good morning to all of you. Well, it has been a long, intensive, and very useful council by video conference once again. Due to the travel restrictions, the ministers have decided to hold this meeting through the plasma. And uh, we had two, two important issues. One, uh, the situation in Ethiopia, and the other, let's say, the, the Russian cluster all the issues related with uh, Russia, but uh, mainly Ukraine. The situation in Ukrainian border, which is uh, really very much uh, worrisome. We invited the Ukrainian foreign minister, Dimitro Kuleva, to stay with us. We comment about the situation on the border, the Russian military build up in the Ukrainian border is very concerning. There is more than 150,000 Russian troops massing in the Ukrainian borders and in, the, in Crimea. The risk of further escalation is evident. We have to commend Ukraine for its uh, restrained response, and we urge Russia to de-escalate and to diffuse tensions. The message of all ministers has been very, very much clear. A complete reiteration, a strong support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Once again, it includes the non-recognition of the illegal annexation of Crimea and the request for the full implementation of the Minsk Agreement. We will continue supporting the efforts on the Normandy format. We welcome increased diplomatic efforts aimed at restoring Ukraine's territorial integrity. We confirm that uh, the European Union will attend the summit of the Crimea platform on the 23rd of August. And at the same time, we talk about uh, the need to speed up substantial progress on reforms. We welcome Ukraine's ambition to approximate its policies to the European Green Deal. We talk about the delivery of uh, vaccines by COVAX. As you know, we are the stronger contributor to this scheme. But the most important message is our strong support to Ukraine and our concern by the Russian military built up that has to a stop on the Crimean border. On the Russian issues, the second thing is uh, the situation of uh, Mr. Navalny, which is critical. I received a letter from Navalny's team about his deteriorating situation. I issued yesterday a strong statement on behalf of the entire European Union Early today, we have had news reporting that Mr. Navalny has been moved to a regional prison hospital, but uh, it remains that the Russian authorities must grant him immediate access to the medical professionals that he trusts. I traveled to Moscow early February to raise this issue eye to eye, face to face, to the Russian authorities. And happily, our request was not heard. The situation is getting worse. And today, we are passing a united message to the Russian authorities. They are responsible for Navalny's safety and health, and we will hold them to account for it. Also, the Czech Foreign Minister briefed us on the announcement this weekend of the expulsion of 18 Russian diplomats linked to the 2014 explosion on an ammunition de depot. 
These diplomats have been identified with the Czech intelligentsia to be Russian military service agents. And the European Union stands united and on solidarity with the Czech Republic. The second big issue was uh, about Ethiopia. We have seen recently some announcements by the government of Ethiopia who went into the Tigray region by blood and sword, creating a very dire humanitarian situation. The progress remains very limited in Tigray. Fighting is ongoing. Humanitarian access is still being prevented. Eritrean troops are not withdrawing, and human rights violations continue. The Council received a report from the Finnish Foreign Affairs Minister, our colleague Havisto, who traveled to the region as a second time as my representative to reiterate the European Union request and assess the situation. He was able to go to Makele, the capital of the Tigray, and to know from the ground how urgent is the need for a ceasefire, a monitored ceasefire, to improve security conditions in Tigray in order to make the humanitarian work possible. And uh, so many times announced withdrawal of Eritrean troops should uh, become a reality immediately. One week ago, United Nations Human Rights Body issued a statement full of allegations about human rights abuses, war crimes, and gender-based violence, which should be investigated and responsible brought to account. I encourage the deployment of the joint investigation between the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission and the Office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights, my friend Bachelet. And finally, the government must show commitment to the organization of a national dialogue in the run-up to the elections. I also informed the Council about my decision to send an electoral observation mission for the forthcoming elections, unless the situation continues further deteriorating. And on the following days, we'll continue following closely the situation in order to confirm our will to send an electoral observation mission in the country, taking into account that in Tigray, for sure, is not going to be election. It would be impossible to imagine such a thing. Apart from the Russian cluster, apart from Ethiopia, we have been talking about the progress on GCPOA, the ongoing talks in Vienna. Over the past week, uh, the talks have moved from general to more focused issues, sanction lifting and nuclear implementation on both sides. The task continues. There are some lights of progress, and just the fact that the U.S. are rejoining the GCPA in return to the full implementation of the deal would make the world much safer. So we are working a lot, and my political director is in Vienna helping to the contest between the U.S. and the Iranians. On Myanmar, uh, the news is that uh, we adopted a second, much larger package of sanctions affecting 10 individuals and also two economic entities belonging to the military. It's once again clear that uh, the humanitarian aid to the people of Myanmar it needs to be increased. We decided to increase it by 9 million euros. But the important thing is to stop of the repression. And during the meeting, the conversations in Georgia were going on. A new proposal was tabled under the authority of President Michel to try to look out for a way out of the political crisis. And at the end of the meeting, we got some news. I welcome the positive indications that the Georgia's dream 
acceptance of the deal which has recently been presented. And I hope that the other parties will move in order to reach an agreement. And I'm urging all parties to find a compromise base in order to get out of the stalemate in which Georgia is currently and to continue its uh, democratic consolidation. Let's hope that by the end of the day, we're going to have good news on that. And this is uh, all about our meeting today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now uh, we will take a few questions. So I give the floor to Ricard. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, very well, very yeah, well. Perfect, thank you. Okay, uh, so Mr. Borrell, first of all, on, on Czech Republic, uh, did Czech Republic ask for a coordinated expulsion of Russian diplomats from various EU member states? And would you support such a move similar to what happened after Salisbury? And secondly, on Ukraine, we now have massive Russian buildup by the border. We have the news about Navalny. Is the EU preparing more sanctions on Russia? Well, uh, the, the, the answer by the time being is no to both questions. It has not been a request for a, a widespread expulsion of Russian diplomats from all of our EU member states. And by the time being, there is no uh, move on the field of uh, more sanctions to Russia. Things can change, but the situation is uh, the way I'm explaining. Thanks a lot. And now, uh, Ketevan, you have the floor. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, well. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hyrep. Uh, you. Um mentioned Georgia, uh, what uh, was the, um, what was the position of uh, uh, ministers during the discussions, what they have suggested to do, uh, were some new recommendations and ideas. Uh, Georgian Dream is ready to sign. Uh, two political uh, parties uh, from opposition are also ready to sign, but uh, the main uh, uh, opposition uh, party, the largest uh, national movement, is not ready to sign. So what is your assessment, recommendation, and main message now, today? Well, in fact, uh, this point has not been a matter of discussing among us. It was just a matter of information from my side, explaining the ministers that uh, working together in coordination with the U.S. through our delegation in Tbilisi, uh, with the guidance of the President Michel, and with the support of the External Action Service, it has been put on the table a proposal that uh, was accepted by the Georgia Dream, the party of the government, and the negotiation was going on with the other parties in order to try to reach an agreement. The prospects are good, but uh, in fact, it was not a discussion among ministers, just uh, they were receiving information and supporting our work. Let's see what's happening at the end of the day. Thanks a lot. And now, uh, Noureddin, you have the floor. Merci, Nabila. Bonjour, Monsieur le Haut Représentant. I have a question on um, the GCPOA. You spoke about some lights of progress. Are you confident or uh, how confident are you that the both parties, the United States and Iran, will reach a deal, let's say, in the few coming uh, weeks? And could you elaborate a little bit uh, in which terms you would describe the, uh, the ongoing discussion this morning to the minister. And uh, just one, uh, one detail. Did you talk a little bit about Lebanon or, or not at all? Thank you. Oh, yes, much. we talk about Lebanon for sure. You know, there is a point in the agenda called current issues, and there is a long list of current issues, and among them for sure Lebanon, where unhappily we see no progress. No progress on government formation or on needed reforms and destruction of the Lebanese political forces effectively blocking a way out of the crisis must stop. I think that um, 
the ministers are very much worried about it. Some countries especially, we need to look for ways to incentivize measures in order to push the political parties to form a government and to face the real economic and governance reform that the Lebanon is needed so much, but it was nothing concrete. That's what I didn't include it in my information about the, the Council. On GCPOA, I updated the ministers on the ongoing talks in Vienna. I talked with uh, Secretary of State Blinken last week when he was in Brussels. I also talked with uh, Minister Sharif. I think that both parts are really interested in reaching an agreement. And they have been moving from general to more focused issues, which are clearly, on one side, sanctions lifting, and on the other side, nuclear implementation issues. I cannot go into details, but I think that uh, there is a real goodwill from both parts to reach an agreement, and that's good news. Will you allow me a last question? As many as you want. <laughs> And I will take a last question, and I give it to uh, Raf. Thank you. Yes, hi, uh, hi, Representative. Uh, Raf Kaslov, Associated Press. I have a question you were mentioning about the 150,000 uh, troops on uh, the Ukraine border, and I just wanted to know uh, how... Uh, did this figure come from the Ukraine uh, foreign minister? Is this based on our own uh, security uh, information? And uh, if we compare that to last week, have we seen uh, a great increase of the past few days, please? Thank you. Yes, the, the military deployment of the Russian troops with all kind of materials, deploying uh, campaign hospitals and all kind of warfare has been continuing. I cannot tell you where this figure comes from, but uh, it is my reference figure. It's the highest military deployment of Russian army in the Ukrainian borders ever. It's clear that uh, it's a matter of concern. Because when you deploy a lot of troops, well, a spark can jump here or there. The minister explained us the number of casualties on the Ukrainian army compared with the same dates of last year, and it's clear that uh, it is a very, a very worrisome situation. No? Let's hope that the, this deployment will, will stop, and according with the request addressed to President Putin by, among others, Chancellor Merkel and President Biden, this deployment will be withdrawn. Thank you very much. And this is, uh, closes our press conference for today. Thank you, Mr. High Representative. Thank you to, uh, to you, interpreters, dear inter interpreters, and thank you to all the journalists who are present today. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.